Welcome everybody back to the introduction of the 1987 SuperMod. In this session, we're going to talk about my use of uh, spreadsheets in order to make an organized gameplay. So in our game, as we know, we have television and we have events, and we also have a roster to manage. There are storylines, there's short-term planning, there's long-term planning. Uh, it's important to keep an eye on your show history to know who wrestled who when. Uh, there's a lot of information in this game. They provide us with a notepad that can be used, but that's only going to go so far and only help you with so much information. In this particular mod, the super mod, as we know, we're dealing with massive amounts of information. I'm currently playing as the AWA, so I'm running two television shows per week, and I record two weeks at a time for the shows. I also run three touring shows per week, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Now, there's a preset for this game that I loaded in the design of it that is the actual 1987 touring schedule for the AWA. When I played this particular game, I did not want to play that schedule, so I wiped it out, and then every month I go in and then I put in the touring schedule for that month. So that's why mine looks a little bit different than what yours would be if you go ahead and play the game from uh, from scratch from the beginning. Yours would have the schedule already loaded into it, the actual schedule that the AWB ran in 1987. So this is a whole lot of information. I've been back, I remember playing T uh, Total Extreme Warfare Revenge back in like 2001, 2002, and then I got back into playing this game in 2018 when I learned that it was it was still going. So that was back when we were playing 2016. So I learned right away, you know, how much realism I wanted and what and what I liked in the game, and I learned right away that you had to have a spreadsheet in order to keep things organized. Otherwise, it was going to be very difficult. So I've designed several spreadsheet styles over the years, uh, and it all depends on how big of a save I'm doing, how far into it I am, how much long-term planning I have to do. So right now, the spreadsheet that I'm using for this particular AWA save is pretty simple compared to spreadsheets that I've used in the past for other saves, other larger saves. I also enjoy playing as Jim Crockett Promotions, and that's a much larger save than uh, the AWA. So that one does take more uh, more details and a lot more time and information. So I'll click on and bring up the spreadsheet. So this is how I organize my television shows. TEW 2020 has a weird thing where you can't record like two all-star wrestlings in a row. You know, when you're when you're booking them, it goes all-star wrestling, then championship wrestling, and then very strangely it goes championship wrestling and then back to all-star wrestling. It's odd. I record uh, both shows in the same venue on the same day, two sets, so the current week and then the following week. So that's how I'm choosing to run things right now. In other saves than that, I normally would split it apart. But I'm just giving this a shot. We're only a couple months into this save. If I find it's too much trouble, I can change it over again. So this is the way television looks. And this is my last batch of recordings. And then I have my previous recordings on here also, going all the way back to when the save first started. So right here, uh, what I will do is I will take a blank card sheet. And I will first do my main event. Who do I want in the main event? Then once I place those people in the main event, I'll find opponents for them. And then I build the rest of the card from there. I only have one serious match per show. The rest are all short squash matches, as you can see, or known as enhancement matches. This is exactly how the AWA did things. So I try to keep it realistic. So you're probably wondering, well, then how do you keep track of everybody in the save and all your roster and make sure everybody's getting TV time and everything else? Well, I'll show you. If I click on singles here, this is a list of my current roster, okay? This is not enhancement talent. 
This is just wrestlers that are on my roster that I want to get TV time to and who are on the touring schedule. The highlighted means that they've been used for the last batch of tapings, okay? So right here, every name that was highlighted, they are in here. Those are the people that were used for the last batch of tapings. People that are not highlighted were not used and will be up next to be used for the next batch of TV tapings. Notice how I have special appearance. These are people that are not on television every week. Uh, obviously, Sheik Adnan LKC is a manager, but he still also wrestles, and he was actually a really good wrestler too. I also have Ray Stevens and Russ Francis. Ray Stevens was semi-retired at this point. Russ Francis was only like a part-time special guest uh, wrestler. Both were also used as guest commentators in the AWA in 1987 and the late 80s. So Ray Stevens, I'll put him on TV every few weeks, Russ Francis every once in a while, but really they're used to uh, help on the tours to fill in if somebody's not there, even though Russ Francis is currently in a program on the tours with Bobby Duncan. So that's how this works. Now the asterisk next to the name, that indicates that these are the people that are on tour. So those names with asterisks are all here on tour. That's how I keep track to know who's been used on tour and who hasn't. So with that, now if I'm going back to building television, obviously since we're running enhancement matches, we need enhancement wrestlers. So this game is realistic in the fact that most of the people on this list were actually enhancement talent for the AWA in 1987 or 1986 or 1989, 88, 89. You know, most of them were not in the game either. I had to create them. But at one point or another, all these people were enhancement talent for the AWA as far as male talent goes. Female talent, uh, there's only you know, a couple that were actually enhancement talent. The others I signed from the open pool. So the way this works with enhancement talent is I like to split them between light heavyweights and heavyweights. I run a light heavyweight division, which we talked about with Nelson Royal as the champion. And uh, that is lightweights. I classify middleweights as heavyweights. So if it's uh, the light heavyweights is lightweight wrestlers. That's not exactly how the AWA was really run. The AWA light heavyweight was really another name for a junior heavyweight. Um, they allowed guys that were like 220 pounds, 230 pounds to carry the light heavyweight title. I don't do that in my save just to keep things interesting and simple. So you'll see, again, the people that are highlighted, they were plugged into the last TV tapings. Okay, And there was probably more, but we went through the whole list already. So like Art Washington, for example, who's at the top, if we look close enough here, we'll see that Art Washington was in a match with Jose Medina, and they lost to McDaniel and Von Rochke. So I keep these organized, and they just go through a list like this. You'll find out as time goes on that some don't jive. They had bad chemistry. You make sure that you don't put them in a tag team together. Uh, sometimes these wrestlers are used as enhancement talent for other promotions also. So sometimes they get skipped over because they're not available for that particular show. But this is the way it's done. You simply plug in the enhancement talent for the television tapings. Now, because I keep the weights separate, I'm careful who they get in the ring with. So if I have a baby face like Mitch Snow, I don't want Mitch Snow squashing a smaller wrestler. It doesn't make Mitch Snow look right. So Mitch Snow will only wrestle other heavyweights. Now Ali Khan, who's a heel, who's a big massive heel, I'll have him only wrestle lightweights because then it makes him look dominant. Hopefully that makes sense, and that's actually old school wrestling psychology. You would see that in the old days, especially with squash matches. For the most part, if the promotion had the bodies to do it. So that's how it's done. The enhancement is put into the matches like this. And it all works out pretty well.
we go back to the game here, we look at the results from the last card, and you can see how things worked out. So here's the last All-Star Wrestling taping. So you can see here Blackie Guzman. It's a horrible name that doesn't quite uh, transfer well to this day and age, but that was actually his name. So Buddy Wolf was put over by Blackie Guzman. The Top Guns defeated Chuck Greenlee, Frank Reese. There was a horrible wrestler by the name of Houdini who worked enhancement talent in the mid-'80s for the AWA. The terrorist who was Jack Victory took him. Johnny Rich defeated Greg Robertson. Jerry Blackwell defeated Dennis Stamp. That name, Dennis Stamp, should sound familiar. He was very good friends with the Funk Brothers. Uh, Dennis Stamp made his way through just about every major promotion doing enhancement matches. He's in his 40s at this point. He's winding down his career. And you'll probably remember him from that 1997 film, Beyond the Mat, where he was the one jumping on the trampoline. That was him. So there's Steve Olsenowski, who defeated Jake Milliman. Jake Milliman's one of the most famous AWA enhancement talents of all time. He wrestled there for years, and I, I, I don't think he ever won a match. And then uh, the Guerrero brothers took out Todd Becker, Jesse Hernandez. Both were real enhancement talents with the AWA in the 80s. And then there's the one serious match, which is Scott Hall defeated Larry Zabisco by DQ. So that's how I use enhancement talent. That's how I build my television cards. And that is how the spreadsheet is used and how it comes in handy and helps you to keep everything organized and clean. I put the tag teams in there too, so I know who I currently have tagging, whether they're face or they're heel. And it really just helps things stay organized. Now, one tip I'm going to give you, something that I've learned over the years by doing this with enhancement talent is don't have feel, uh, heel and face turned on. Turn that off. And that way, the enhancement talent can wrestle anybody and it won't hurt you in your scoring. And that's realistic. You didn't have heel and face enhancement talent back when that was a regular thing in pro wrestling. Now, to keep yourself organized with the spreadsheet, you do have face and heel listed here, so you know who's heel and face for the junior heavyweights, for the uh, heavyweights, that should actually read light heavyweight, uh, who's face and heel with the females, but it's organized here, you know who is who and what their disposition is, but in the game, when it comes to options, that's actually turned off. So if I go to product and take a look at the top, it'll say, yes, there is a face and heel divide, but it isn't enforced. Now, as I've said before, in other saves I've had, the spreadsheet has been a lot more intricate, a lot more detailed. I will plan out big events long into the future. We'll even do things like figure out the towns for the touring schedule. But for right now, the AWA is pretty well controlled. This is a new save. There's only one major event uh, per year in the 19, year 1987 for AWA, and that was Super Clash, which already happened. So I'm not too concerned about this point at this point of doing further things in the spreadsheet. I don't think it's necessary. Now, as this save grows, and you'll be with me because I'm doing a whole other series on the current save, you'll see that we may add things to the spreadsheet. So hopefully that gave you some basic information, some basic ideas uh, if you wanted to carry a spreadsheet of your own and to help keep yourself organized and keep things neat and clean because this is a this is an intense save with a lot of information and this will uh, it, it's easy to get lost and get caught up and you know can uh, double book and, and mess things up so the spreadsheet really really helps I remember when I first started playing a few years ago I was actually using a uh, notebook and I filled that notebook up along with writer's cramp in my hand in about a about two or three weeks so I find it much easier to use an electronic spreadsheet. So hopefully this helps you. Uh, if you're enjoying the content on this channel, I ask you to please like and please subscribe because we're going to keep going with this. This is uh, something new and something fun 
and I'd like you to stick with me on the journey. Thanks. Have a good one.